welcome to the Sweet Pea and Chickadee YouTube channel. I'm Kimberly. Today is Monday, November 28th, and I'm coming to you from Haymarket, Virginia with a special Advent episode. Yay! I'm so excited. This is going to be like the most fun. I probably spent the most time preparing for this episode just because I just love Advent. I love Advent knitting. I love the holidays. It's just so much fun. Um, side note, I did not make the sweater. <laughs> It's like my ugly sweater cardigan type of thing. <laughs> this is a crafty podcast where we mainly focus on knitting and crochet, but we also hit any other crafts that we just happen to be have done that day. Today we'll be knitting and crochet because it's Advent. Yay. Uh, Brooke is not here with me. She's at school. I mean, she doesn't have a yarny Advent, so it's okay. To all of our new viewers, welcome. Come join in. I hope you find some Advent ideas and just... At, is joining on the Advent spirit. To all those that have been here for a while, all of our returning viewers, thanks, come on in. I hope you love this Advent episode. You can find us on Instagram at Sweet Pea and Chickadee, and you can find me on Ravelry at K Armini, just my first initial last name. So this episode is slightly different as it's gonna be all about Advent and Advent knitting. Um, if you didn't get an advent this year, do not worry. Everything that I'm going to talk to you about can be done with scraps or whatever yarn that you have. You can even make your own advents. Um, you can just like wind up 20 grams or have a whole bunch of minis. Um, you can just stick them into a bag and then each day pull out a new one, surprise, and knit it into whatever advent pattern you want. Advent patterns are great because you can be any kind of scraps. You can even take non-advent patterns like that are just all one color. You can turn them into advent patterns. I mean like the possibilities are endless. You can really do whatever you want. And there are quite a few actual patterns that I put on my bundle that I'm going to talk to you about that aren't even really good for advent knitting per se because you don't even need that much yarn. It's basically like a one row kind of like it's really for scraps. So that's even more for scraps and that'd be even more fun um, you can do. So you don't even need advent mini skeins. I did create one of those cool bundles in Ravelry. It's called Advents and Scraps because, I mean, they kind of go hand in hand. And also some of them kind of lean more towards scraps. Some of them are really great for Advents, but you can make your own Advent. You can use whatever colors you have. You can use leftovers. It's no issue whatsoever. So if you, I'm going to link that down below if you guys want to go check it out later. I'm not even going to talk about everything that's in there. There's like 26 patterns in there. So go ahead and peruse as you will. Um, and see if you have any good ideas. Send me some in comments. If I didn't mention anything, I don't have anything in my bundle. It doesn't mean I don't know it's there. It just means that maybe I didn't like it. <laughs> or, I mean, I'm also kind of picky when it comes to the knitting crochet, only because I want my advents to be soothing. That's another prerequisite, if you will, for like my qualifications for my advents. It has to be it doesn't have to be like garter or something super easy, but it has to be more on the soothing spectrum. I don't want to have to think too hard unless it's something I really, really, really want. You may hear a noise in the background, people moving throughout the house, other people live here. <laughs> and also we have, I mean, our construction, if you saw my episode from yesterday, um, cause that's going to go up first. So you should see that, or maybe you haven't yet, but like trying not to lose my mind. We're hosting this huge, that we do every year, this huge work party for my husband here this Saturday. Today's Monday. On Saturday, we're hosting the party. And it's like construction up in my kitchen right now. It's just like, there was no ceiling hardly. I mean, like the drywall wasn't there. The drywall is now up. Our guests aren't gonna see like up into the rafters. <laughs> For crying out loud. So that's good. For this bundle, I went through and pulled out all of my previous patterns that I had saved in my queue just to, because I had saved them, I hadn't used them yet, so I went ahead and moved them over um, to my bundle, and then I went and found new ones as well. So really, if you can't, if you haven't already guessed <laughs> and can't tell by the way I'm talking, I have made no plans, like zero plans for my advent knitting. It is the 28th, Monday. The first is on Thursday. I do this all the time. I believe like last year I was like filming for you guys on Instagram. I'm pretty sure or on Vlogmas. It was something and I was like the night before <laughs> the first. I'm still trying to decide what I'm gonna make. So what happens? I'm used to it. I'm super busy this week. It's always super busy the week before the party. Um, but the best part about having a party the very first weekend in December is that I have to have all of my Christmas stuff up and ready in the house. My house thoroughly like deep cleaned. So it's really stressful. But then after that, I'm set for the rest of December. 
like so nice. I mean, that's what I had that to look forward to. <laughs> But the thing also is, I don't want to get behind. So Thursday's the first, the party's on Saturday. I don't want to wait till Sunday to start Advents, like no matter how busy I am. Because then I feel like if I start off behind, I'll just stay behind and I don't want to do that. I usually end up getting maybe a little bit behind on Advent knitting closer to Christmas because I'm more busy during that time with like family and stuff. So I kind of like to save it for then if I'm going to get behind. And then the project's mostly done by then anyways. So I want to have everything kind of sort it out and I may even be working, I'm probably going to be working through that with you here on this video because I do have, I think one narrowed down to like two and maybe, maybe have something picked out for one of them, but I have nothing, so no solid plans. <laughs> so we're gonna do this together. So grab a drink and a snack and let's get right into it. First up though, I want to kind of go over my previous um, advent projects. There's not that many, I didn't start in any, I cut my first advent in 2019 and I'm actually still knitting with that yarn <laughs> for a whip that I'm going to show you here in a minute. Um, so I really don't have that many finished objects. I want to go through and like show you the patterns I've already done. Um, and that way we know why I'm not having them on my list this year. And also kind of like what I kind of like and what I kind of want to maybe do differently for this year. Um, so first off, my very first finished object for advent knitting. And this was in 2020's Advent, was my Radvent Throw by Amba O'Brien. One of my favorite blankets. I love it so much. It is fingering and it's fingering held fingering. So it's, it's like a lightweight blanket. Is that a new term? Fingering held fingering? <laughs> so not held double, basically. Um, I loved it. I found this quite easy to keep up with. I didn't get behind till like closer to Christmas. And by then I only had a couple left. I could easily knock this out. And like, I don't, it wasn't that long. I don't, it was under an hour, this. So it didn't take that long. The only thing is the cast on, the little pinhole cast on, which I wish I would have known my new one that I just showed you guys for my muscle burra, my muscle burra number seven. Is that where I learned it from? Yes. Um, there's a link that I'll put down in the show notes again. And it's a uh, tutorial video from... Blanking, I'll put that right here. <laughs> it's like a totally famous company. Why can't I think of it? Anyways, that would I, if I would have known it back then, I would have been made this a lot easier. But they're like not all the same, the middle, but it's okay, it's a blanket. And then I just use um Broca Ultra Wool in like a cream color, whatever it is, snow, salt, I don't know, um, as the border and the joiner. But all I did was like make one a day. It was so nice. And at that time, my qualification was I wanted something that I can knit on one each day and be done. That was my qualification, that's what I wanted. And that's why I really didn't have any blankets, so I made this one and I made mine bigger. So I used two 12 day advents for this um, blanket. And then, so I had two main skeins with those 12 day advents. So the main skeins made up four squares and the other main skein was over here. And then I just showed it and I mixed and matched and just kind of like laid it out in anyway. So I made it bigger than the pattern says because you can do that. You can add more squares to make things bigger if you want to. So I love this Advent Throw by Amba O'Brien. So the Amba O'Brien has a ton of Advent patterns. And I think a couple of them I'm going to mention, at least one. The next one were for all from last year because this would be 2021 now. I have two that I finished. The first one is the Just Feel Cozy Wrap by Kalisha Ryan. I love this so much. It is fingering held double. So the same mini skein held it double. So you're not like holding it with another fingering. It's held double with the same color. So it makes it a DK weight, which is another thing I really wanted. I wanted something crochet, which I found amazing to have a knitting advent if you have more than one advent to have one knitting and one cro crochet, because then I felt it was really nice to go back and forth. And the crochet one went a lot faster. I mean, it helped that it was held double in the DK. But here, it's like a, just a shawl wrap, rectangle, kind of like at an angle, diagonal kind of. So I love this, super warm, super cozy, right, nice and big. Love it. Love, love, love. And Kalisha Ryan actually has another one of these. It's called the Just Feel Festive Wrap. And it's similar in this, but it's on the bias and it's like straight stripes. I actually like this like chevroni kind of, but the, the chevronis were like different. 
super cool. I love this one. The other one I made, oh, and I made this one with my Rising Tide Fiber Co. Advent. It was the Bridgerton one. Love it. Okay. And this one was so great because I got to crochet and I didn't even have, to, I didn't try to plan colors. I just knit one day at a time, went right through it. And I mean, the color opening sequence was amazing. It's like perfect. And so it was just really nice to just, just knit one. And this one was really easy. I did like three rows per color and it was just, because you're holding it double so it went by faster. And it just, it, I was done in like 20 minutes with each day. The next one is the Litmus Cowl by Stranded Dye Works. I modded it a little bit, but I used, so we had, I did the 24 Days of Cheer last year, and so I did like a little swap, and I did it with Anna from Zebra Yarns. So she sent me a whole bunch of basically Zebra Yarns yarn. It was so amazing. Um, and so I wanted to do something stripey in a cowl, so I love cowls. It's more of an infinity. And uh, I did this stripe. I ordered just like a undyed yak. I found it for a really good deal on Etsy um, and it came pretty fast. I was so excited. So I had this. So the normal pattern is like this, the big stripes. And then I added a section of smaller stripes. These ones that look like smaller stripes is actually self striping from Anna. So it was really cool that I just added that in there. I love how it's some of it's solid, some of it's tonal, some variegated, some self striping. I love it. And like, if I double it up, I'm still, it's still a little, it's nice. It's really nice. So that I finished. And so I have those ones from last year. Now I have some whips <laughs> still from last year. And they're, I mean, it's going to be years. I'm, I'm pretty sure. One of them, hopefully not years, but something else I started last year, I had leftovers of some colors, not all colors. I had leftovers of Anna's yarn. Um, and so I'm like, what else am I gonna do with this? I wanted to make a bunting, like a bunting that you can hang it, and I wanted to hang it in my yarn room, like a decoration. I don't even think I did that many. Two, three. So I made like this one and I faded it into the next color. I made this one. Is that all I made? <laughs> two? I only made two. Oh dear. So I think it makes like at least 12 to make it a good size, but I was just going to make whatever I had. And so I have these ones still to make quite a bit left over and I haven't made anything. So that's still there. And I totally anticipated that would not take this long at all. Um, quite sad. I think I just, I don't know if I forgot about it, but I just moved on. I need to remember because it mean it does take some time. You think this wouldn't take very long, but it really does because you have to keep track the whole time. Like it's not really super. I mean, it's garter, so it's kind of mindless, but you have to like you're decreasing like all the time. <laughs> so you have to keep count. Is really all it is. But that one is the pattern I use for that is let me find it. Bunting fit for a queen by Vero Pepperell. That was like the one that looked like the most. That's the one I wanted to use. And it uses like, it says six, but I think I was estimating like seven or eight grams for this. Probably depends on the yarn, right? But so yeah, then I still have further like leftovers. It didn't meet that qualification of 68 grams. And I'm, I kept those aside because I didn't know if I wanted to do something even more. So like in this advent is getting me like three projects. And this is being held in a strappy angel bag, baby Yoda, Christmassy one, which is why I know I said I like was running out of Christmas bags. It's because I still have stuff from last year. Okay, and the other one, which you guys have seen, if you've been here before, in a big Janet tote from Scrappy Angel, Harry Potter, um, is the Arabian Tales blanket. Now I know I haven't shown it in a while and I haven't worked on it in a while. So let's take a look at it. I am using two Chelsea Lux yarn advents, the 2019 one I got in Sparkle. I had never used because it's so beautiful and gorgeous. And then I ordered in 2021 again the Sparkle advent with Chelsea Lux yarn, thinking I would do I would combine them and do something amazing. Which I am. It's, and I knew it was gonna be a long-term project. It's okay. I am doing the Arabian Tales blanket by uh, Svetlana Gordon. 
it's actually Arabian Tales is the pattern name because it's not a blanket, it's a stole. It's like a shawl. And I turned it into a blanket. And I'm not the first one. There's other people in projects that have done this. They might not make it, I don't know what their sizing is, but um, I just went off the size I had for the yarn and how big I wanted it. Take this out. And I'm using my signature, my signature needle arts. Um, I went ahead and purchased, I knew this would take me a long time. I purchased two stilettos and I made them the longer ones because I need to be able to have so many stitches on at one time. And these are my, my super nice set. And I only need two, so I only ordered two. So here is what I have so far. And I don't know what I, when I showed you guys last. I might have marked it. Or maybe I didn't. Or maybe I showed you guys last here. Who knows? But here it is. Isn't that pretty? So it's very scrappy. You do not have to have add-ins for this. You can make this super scrappy. You can make this more coordinated, like four colors and just do whole skeins. I know some people who did like the rose one color or they just alternated or, you know, I saw that on their project page. Oh my goodness, I got yarn everywhere. Now, it doesn't seem like it, but all of these ends are woven in already. I did the weave and sieve method as I go. It makes it nice and tight up here. I just have not clipped it because I want to block it first when it's done and then trim everything. The only thing that's not woven in is some of the very end ones, and I'm gonna go through and do that. Leave those in. But I'm on row one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going widthwise. You could also go lengthwise, but I did the bottom first. And I've already gone through all of the colors in both advents, and now I'm just putting them, I wanna put them all in there once, like by themselves. And now I'm just going there and putting whatever looks good next to the next color. I'm like not paying attention really. It's really nice. And look at the sparkle. Oh my goodness. And I found that if I started the next one, like cast on the next color, which I have as this color, if I cast on the next one when I was done, I just cast it on and put it aside that it was easier for me to pick up because, you know, but like each one of these takes like 45 minutes. So <laughs> And it, I was making good progress back in the day when I was doing like one a day, like the first thing when I wake up, I would do it. Um, and then I just, you know, started doing other things. What happens? But this is what I have so far. And that's going to go right on top of this one. So I want to actually pick that up during Advent. And I know I have a couple Advents I'll be doing anyways, but like first thing in the morning, waking up and doing 45 minutes on what it, so I mean, it's gonna take a while, 45 minutes per thing, oh my gosh. That's okay, it'll be a great blanket when it's done. But yeah, so I really love this, and it's gonna be amazing, but it's a super long-term project. Don't expect to see that finish anytime soon. And I kind of just knit on it when I when I feel like doing it. But I'm hoping to maybe um, pick it up, because I'll be in a scrappy mood, because it's Advent season. And I think that's maybe why I like Advent, season so much is that you have something to do each day. It's almost like a schedule. You knit the next color and it's exciting because you haven't seen it yet and you knit it or crochet it into your project and it's like a set thing that you do. I think that's why I like it, the routine, which you would think if I like it, I would, I know people that like create schedules and knit or crochet based off of that. So you'd think I would do that more, but I don't. <laughs> I just, I don't want to, I don't think. I don't know, but when it's the holidays, I think and it could be because the holidays are a little bit more stressful, however way you look at it, because of all the, just all this preparations and stuff like that. So they're a little more stressful. Um, and so maybe that monotony of like already not having to think about what you're going to knit on, like it's already there for you. That probably also helps during this time period. So maybe... You'll see me knitting on that this December. I do not know. We'll see. Because <laughs> maybe I'll also, but that's why I haven't, I don't plan on casting on another blanket. I have a ton of blankets for Advent knitting in my bundle, and I didn't pull any out that I'm going to talk about because I don't want to start another blanket. I already have like three blankets on my needles and hooks, and I'm like, I, I love starting blankets, but I know that blankets take me a while, so I don't want to start them, <laughs> start another one 
want to get these ones finished. So really, I only have two whips, Advent whips, from last year. And I don't have anything here before because, I mean, I haven't been doing Advents that long. So that's, that's actually pretty positive. I was thinking I had, like, so many. <laughs> I only have two. So that's not bad. But let's get into the good stuff. Let's get into the patterns and my Advents. I am just, this is like, I'm so excited. I love, I just love it. I love it. I've always loved Advents. I've always, we, our kids always had Advents every year. And then when yarn Advents started becoming a thing, I'm like, I want yarn Advents. So now our whole family always has Advents. My husband gets like an alcohol Advent. He really likes like special bourbons or whiskeys. I think this year we got like a Japanese one or something. Um, and then we, this year I actually got the wine and the beer advent from Costco. So two separate ones. <laughs> so that'll be fun. I usually, last year I got tea and like the little jam one. I still have jam from last year. So I didn't get that one. And I still have tea from last year. Didn't get that one. Um, maybe next year. And my daughter, Brooke, she got like a makeup one from Ulta. And then my son always gets the Lego one. He's 20 years old in college and he gets the Lego advent. He just really likes it. He's gotten it every year. And I love buying it for him. It's just so sweet. Um, but I got a lot of advents. And actually, and then my mom who comes here for Christmas, she gets the a coffee. She wants a K-cup, a coffee advent. <laughs> so she wants, she got it last year. She wants it this year. And then my husband, um, he actually gets two Advents this year because he also wanted a coffee one. So coffee and alcohol, I guess that's hand in hand, I guess. But I got quite a few. So let's go ahead and get into Advents. So the first Advent I purchased was not even until August. And I was holding off because I saw last year that Hedgehog Fibers posted their Advents for sale in August of last year, 2021. And I had already bought like my first big ones. And it's a... Hedgehog Fibers is more expensive advent and it's coming from Ireland. So I like, I'd already spent like my Chelsea Lux. That was my expensive one from last year. Um, so I was holding off waiting to see and sure enough, they released it and I got it. So I've had this and they send it to me. I swear I had this in September, October, September. I had this so early. So I have my Hedgehog Fibers advent and it comes, I, I just took it out of the box. Like just took it out of the box. I hadn't even, I basically opened the box to make sure what it was. And then I, mean, I knew what it was, but like just to kind of see it. And then I closed it back up. And so all these advents I'm showing you have been in their box. I open them, just take a peek and that's it. Pearl Smith, I just got theirs and I, or like last week and I hadn't even opened the box. I just did and I just love it. Everything, all of our advents are so well packaged. They're amazing. So it's Hedgehog Fibers, and this is really cool because it comes with, you basically poke open the doors and open them up. So let's take a look. So if you have Hedgehog Fibers Admins and you don't want to like open the box, I mean, I'm just going to, it's just going to show you the doors and just skip ahead. Oh my goodness. So they're like little, oh my gosh, they're like little boxes. Okay. So they're like little doors you had to poke open. This is even better. Okay, so here's all the days. And these are little boxes. Where's, where's the big one, right? Oh, it goes in order. Or, no, it goes in order by section. I don't want to open it. I just want to like see. Yeah, it, it pops out. So there's the box for day one. Isn't that cool? That's so cool. So I can easily put it back in if I want to. Those are my hedgehog fibers. There was no real theme, I don't think, but hedgehog fibers is color, color, color. And I love that. So that's kind of what I'm basing off of what I was, like trying to pick for my pattern wise. Now there's no main skein. I knew that and I didn't know. So 24, so 24 mini skeins and no main skein. So it also has to do with whatever advent um, or whatever pattern I choose for that. Oh, okay, so that's Hedgehog Fibers. That's, I have two full advents. That's my first full advent. My second full advent, I like bought on the, <laughs> on the fly basically, like a couple weeks ago, Ruby and Roses. I, Addie from Ruby and Roses posted, she has some like leftovers that she was selling. And I had never tried her yarn before. I'd always wanted to try her yarn. I see Delight Knits podcast. She knits with her yarn a lot. And I was like, I really want to, I saw last year's advent and it was gorgeous. 
And so I went ahead and ordered that. So this is how, I mean, I, I peeked and then I closed it back up. So this is how it arrived. And those little, they're sparkly. <laughs> so here comes the like little card telling you all about it. And then if I move everything a little bit, there's like, here's what it is. So each one comes in a little velvety bag and that box in the middle, I think is an extra gift. And then it comes with a main skein. I believe that's what this is. So I think it's 24 minis and then one main skein on the 25th. I believe that's what it is. Does it say on here? It also has, now she also has a advent pattern that goes with it for a shawl, which is very pretty. I just don't think I'm gonna use it because I found a couple others that I really want. I think I wanna use, but that's always an option. I could use her pattern. I did see it on Delight Knits. She tested it for her and it's beautiful. But yeah, they all come in these gorgeous little bags that you could totally reuse. I love that when I can keep them and reuse them for something else. So I'll make this all pretty um, later when I get ready for my advent prep and I will open that little gift later. I will probably open my little extras because a couple of these come with little extras. Um, I'll probably open those I usually wait till the first and have like a whole bunch of things to open on the first, but maybe during Advent prep. So like, and I'm busy this week, so it'll probably be Wednesday night. <laughs> maybe a, like a little soothing thing. I'll just like open up my couple little um, extras just to have as I get everything ready. So those are my two full Advents. I also have a Mandy's Makings Advent. It's the Share a Pair Advent that she had on sale like last spring. My friend Angel from the Scrappy Angel. The theme is the holiday, which we both love that movie, that holiday, that Christmas movie. And um, so she wanted to go in on it, so I went on it with her. Um, so we halved it, essentially. And what it is, is four sets of share a pair. So she got a pair, a share a pair, I got a share a pair for four sets. So one you open each week. And there was a couple little goodies in there that we just split up. So when you open it, and she even had her daughter like read, because they were all packaged together. She had her daughter repackage it so she couldn't see. And that way I have my own to open up. And she even sent this over to me because she didn't keep this one, I guess. Here's the little, the holiday, the little. And here I got this extra and some little candies. And then here are my share pairs and it has the actual date on it to open. So I have one to open. I don't open the first one until December 4th, which is Sunday, so it's every Sunday. So December 4th, the first Sunday, and then, then the last one I open is on Christmas because Christmas is on Sunday, so that's cool. And so I, I could just make share pair socks, right? But as I was looking through some of my patterns, I think maybe there's some patterns I can make, make with it. I think it'll depend on what the colors are when I open them up. So that's probably a pattern and an ad that I won't be knitting on right away. Then I got Woolen's and Nosh self striping advent. I had Woolen's and Nosh last year self striping advent. I'm going to show the package. So if you got Woolens and Nosh and you don't want to see the out, the stuff that you see right away when you open it, the contrasting color, look away. <laughs> I'm sure you've already opened it and seen it, but if you haven't, look away and you don't want to see it. So first, here's what it looks like when you open it up. That's the little card. I think all the information is on this card. I haven't even opened the package, but you do get to see some of the goodies. That's the contrasting color. It's a beautiful purple. That's a cute little charm, a little um, mushroom. And it's from Charmed and Dangerous. And I did sneak a peek right here. I know what this is right away. This little bag is caramels, I think. Cause this is what she gave us last year and they were delicious. So I'm really excited that we got some more of those candies. Um, and then yeah, so in this little canvas bag are two separate already, already wound skeins of yarn. So like 50 gram skeins. 
for you to start immediately on your socks. This is the contrasting, so you can make your cuff, heel, and toe in this, um, or whatever, however you want to do it. I like to make my cuff in the contrasting and then the heel, and the toe can be in whatever, but I usually do the toe as well. And I have a short toe, I do a rounded wedge so it doesn't use as much yarn, so it's totally fine. I usually have enough. Um, and then in Woolens and Nosh Advent, in between each stripe a day color is this purple color. So when you're knitting, you never see the next day until you're actually knitting it. So it's quite a surprise. So a lot of times when you're doing the self-striping uh, one stripe a day, you see it because you're winding it up or you're holding it in your bag or, you know, you, you can kind of see, you still know the order that's coming in. It's still a surprise. But this is even more of a surprise. It's already wound in the bag. You don't ever see it. It's snapped shut and it, it'll have a little purple um, yarn already sticking out to start your first day. So I don't even know what day one's color looks like. It's already ready, ready to go. So less prep for this. I have to wind this. The only thing is I will probably want to do my cuff. If I want to start knitting on day one and I will make bowl socks at the same time, just on two different nine inch circulars. If I want to do that, I'm going to have to make my cuff already. Unless I plan on making two cuffs on Thursday. Probably not. <laughs> so what I should do actually is like today or tomorrow, wind up these skeins and get the cuffs at least going um so i have a lot going on right now just so i can get the cuffs done before thursday and that way i can start with my stripe a day or at least get them mostly done so i only have some of the cuff to do on thursday something like that or i i may be doing this on thursday because i'm just too busy who knows but the purple is pretty last year it was cream these were cream and the in-between color was a cream stripe so this is purple so exciting And I believe she even had a DK kit. I got the fingering. So it's 9010, Superwash, Tarji, and then Nylon. I love it. Then I also got, I mentioned the Pearl Smith Advent. I know I said last, I like was been waiting for it. Yeah, I missed it back in like spring or something. Anna from ZB Arms was like, I got mine a while ago. Cause you know, I'm like, so I miss it. And I follow her on Instagram and I didn't even see the shit pre-orders. But <laughs> she had a couple extra, and so I was able to snag one, and it was the full kit, which is what I wanted, because last year I was able to snag one last minute, and it was a 12-day, which was so awesome, but I love them, and I wanted the full day this year, and it just so happened that that's what she had left over, and that's perfect. So it's the Pearl Smith is a stitch marker. She also does jewelry, I think. Um, it's all about pearls mainly, different colors that she colors. But also she's doing more of like some crystal glass and some other types of things as well. Um, and this one, it's all, they're all ringed stitch markers of varying sizes. And it's the antique brass color, which I love. And I love her stitch markers because they're so smooth. They do not sag with my yarn. I haven't had any issues with my previous ones and I use them the most, I feel like. Because they're also like a little dangly because they have like a little pearl dangle. So they're a little dangly and pretty, but they're not long enough to get caught up in my yarn. So that's why I really like them too. And it comes beautifully packaged. I also think that it comes with a sock pattern. Put it in here, but I have not opened it. I don't open it. And each one is going to be individually wrapped. But I will open this on Thursday, December 1st. Yay. So glad I got that. I even had Anna help me try to... I'm like, let me know if you see it, because maybe I miss it. And so we were like <laughs> tag team and trying to give me this out of it. So thank you, Anna. Speaking of Anna from Zebra Yarns, I also got her 12 Days of Christmas stripey Advent socks. Her starts on Christmas Day. So I have all of your stuff to knit up until Christmas. And then this one starts on Christmas Day. And it comes with full skein and also um, like contrasting mini. And I love these. So it's 12 stripes a day for 12 days. So obviously her stripes are thicker and I just love them. They're, it was so fun. So I'm really excited to have this to like look forward to on Christmas day. And I think I can feel it. They're already caked up, which is amazing. What I have, I, there's another ad that I do not have yet. And I knew I wouldn't have it in time because it explicitly said so <laughs> when I ordered it, but it's the freckled whimsy advent. I got it last year as well, and it's still sitting in the packaging because I had so much other stuff to knit. And I was like, oh, I'll knit it. Maybe it'll be like my January or February. Like I was planning on doing it in another month, like one stripe a day, and I never did. 
So I still have it. So then I wasn't going to buy freckled whimsy again because I already had last year's. But then the other day she had leftovers. and I saw the bag in my thing. I'm like, I should get the next year's. <laughs> so I ordered it, even though it was a pre-order, knowing I won't get it till like at least mid-December. I think it's actually like Christmas time is when you're going to get it, which is totally fine because even if I wanted to knit on that this year, I still would want to knit last year's first. So I'm toying with maybe also knitting along with that. I'm going to start my advents and see how I'm going. <laughs> I don't want to overwhelm myself as well. And I don't usually put pressure on myself anyways for my knitting and my crocheting. This is my soothing time. This is my me time. I don't want to stress myself out. The only time it gets stressful is if I'm on a deadline for something, a test knit, and also for like gift knitting. And I'm only gift knitting like one thing this year. The other ones I'm cranking like for socks and stuff. So that'll be easy. But like easier. But so I, my freckle whimsy is not here yet. And I wasn't going to knit that probably this month anyway. So that's okay. And freckle whimsy, if you don't know, is another self striping yarn for like, so it's one a day stripes, just like one's a nosh, a little different setup, but it's one stripe a day. And I believe it is the unwound full skein because there's a whole bunch of options. You can get pre separated 50 grams already done. I think mine was the full, I took whatever was left. Full skein with the, but I do believe I get the contrasting mini. I really hope I did not speed talk right through that. <laughs> Cause I usually don't realize I'm speed talking until afterwards. I'm like, hmm, what's that speed? That's my normal speed. So I try to have to slow down. And to me, when I slow down my words, I feel like I'm going too slow. <laughs> so whatever. All right, so I hope that you can also slow me down on, on YouTube, just so you know if you ever need to. Okay, let's get to the fun pattern stuff. I just did the fun advent stuff I showed you. Now for patterns. Okay, so patterns are great because they can be scrappy or they can be advent patterns or they can be regular patterns I we can make into advent or scrappy patterns. I mean, you can do whatever you want with this. Most of mine are made for advents that I pulled out. That's only because my my prerequisite with myself is that I want it to be super smooth sailing. I don't want to think too much. So I'm just choosing things that are already basically done. It tells you when to change color, tells you when to do this, and that way it's more soothing and relaxing for me. You can do whatever you want, of course. I also have knitting and crochet patterns in here. I really only have a couple of crochet I noticed when I was going through. But I always like to do at least one crochet. If I get more than one advent, I like a knit one and a crochet one. To break up the, it's just, it's very nice. Because sometimes it'll just be nice to have a crochet hook and doing it. And they go a little faster. Or I feel like doing my needles. I mean, whatever, whatever you want. But I like to have one of each. And we'll see. Okay, first up. These first two are the ones I'm thinking of for my Hedgehog Fibers Advent. Now remember, I only have 24 minis, no main color. I mean, I can always grab a main color. And quite frankly, I have Hedgehog Fibers main color, so I could do that. I See, I'm thinking this through with you guys. I could add a Hedgehog Fibers whole skein that I already have. Oh gosh, <laughs> I thought I had it narrowed down. I do this. Something, sometimes it's really great to talk things through. Okay, so I only have 24 mini skeins. However, I now we know I, can, I could add a main color if I wanted to, a main skein. First up I have is brand new pattern. It's the Candy Mountain Cowl by Twin Stitches Designs. This is new. It's got a little bit of color work in it, but it looks very like you only do a couple rounds of color work and then it's a solid, right? And even the color work is very like steady. It's the same every, every time for that round. So it looks pretty nice. And I did order these two Amplifiber skeins, kind of with this in mind, um, to be the main color in between the main skein color. Cause it's like neutral, but it's got pops of color. So it'll go with any advent I feel like, especially my bright colored hedgehog fibers advent. But I do not have to use these for that advent. And really, or, and really that pattern, the Candy Mountain Cowl, I don't have to, if I don't do it, I'll just save these for something else. And the Candy Mountain Cowl, you can use it fingering or you can hold fingering double and get DK. Um, if you hold it fingering, one skein is all you need. But if you do DK, obviously, hold it double. Um, and the good thing about that also is you only use five to 10 grams of yarn. 
five grams for a held single, and if you're holding it double, 10 grams of yarn. So that, I would have like a whole other 10 grams left of my mini skeins. I could do a whole other project with that. It is a cowl and you twist it, and so they call it Mobius cowl, um, which I love those. And so I'm really, I'm really, I really like that look. And I like if my hedgehog fire was gonna be super bright advent, which I'm assuming it will be, maybe it won't be, but they have super bright colors, speckles. I mean, I love hedgehog fires. It might be nice if I'm gonna put it in a pattern to break it up with something neutrally to kind of like anchor the colors down, kind of calm them down a little bit, make it more wearable, especially with my red hair. I love bright colors, but wearing them with red hair, it's not always great. Um, so that might be kind of nice. And then I can make a whole other pattern because I have 10 grams left. The next one up is the Adventuring Wrap by Amba O'Brien. I've had this on my, pat on my list for a while. I really want to make it and I want to make the fringe version. There's, I think with this pattern, you get like three different options. You get the wrap, there's a wrap with fringe and then there's cowl and they're varying uh, amounts of yarn, obviously. I would want to do the full wrap with the fringe. And so it would use almost, if not all of the yarn. And it's fingering, held fingering. Um, and I just really like it with the fringe. I just love it. I don't know, I don't know why. So that one, I don't need a main color or a whole skein. I would just use the mini skein. So that's another good one to use for my hedgehog fibers. And also another thing for my ruby and roses, since I do have a main color, I also don't have to use it. <laughs> like I don't have to use it with that. I just like to do that all in one, kind of wrap it up with a bow nice and tidy. Okay, then the next advent pattern I have on my list is the Scattering Petals Cowl by Dana Ray Makes. I loved watching everyone make this last year and I was regretting not doing it. <laughs> You can make it in fingering weight or hold the double to make it DK. And I think if you use it from DK, you only get two repeats out of it, of the colors, which makes it like barely a, you know, a double loop, I think. Um, it does look like it takes a minute because it does, but I mean, if you're holding a DK, it'd go faster and it looks so plushy. So I do really like that too. The next one up, I just found this year. I don't know when it, if it's new or not, but it's Mini Patch Cowl by Chit Chat Knits. That looks fun. Like, it's kind of like a fade, but kind of like, you know, quilty kind of thing. It looks really cool. It's fingering weight. The good thing about this is it uses 10 grams or less of yarn. So I can make this one with the Candy Mountain Cowl with the same yarn. That's kind of cool. One of the things though is that you can definitely see the kind of like fadey or the patchworky kind of thing, but if your yarn is very similar or if it's highly speckled or variegated, you may not see it as much. It'll look more like a fade, which is also really cool. That might be okay. And you can do this with 12 or 25 day advent. So that's also really nice. The next pattern I have here is actually a crochet pattern. And this is Mrs. Fezzy Wig. And it's by Barker Wool, Dawn, Bar uh, Dawn from Barker Wool. Uh, I just saw this. I think it's new this year and it's a really cool kind of a spiked chevron uh, stitch I've never seen before and I saw her sample on her Instagram on Revelry it's in black and white but on Instagram it's in color and I just saw it and it is so pretty. I did notice I think it does like a repeat so like it does like the first 25 and then it repeats so um it looks like I would just do like the first third or half and then like repeat it as I go, which may, I'm not, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with doing more after Christmas. I don't have to have my advent patterns done before the holidays or I mean, it just looks, it looks really cool. I really like that look of that spiked chevron pattern and I love having a crochet project. So I think, but you do need a main skein. I did notice you needed all 25 or 24 mini skeins and a whole main skein. So I, um, that would be great for the Ruby and Roses, but also as I just thought about my hedgehog fibers, I have quite a few <laughs> whole skeins of hedgehog fibers I haven't used. Hmm. So I was thinking though, that would be my Ruby and Roses would be the Mrs. Fezziwig by Don Barker of Barker Wool. 
Also, we have the Advent Fringe Shawl by Chi Wei Ronk. I, you only need 12 minis with that and a main color. So that doesn't really work for mine, but it could work for the Mandy's Makings. And I could just like break it up because I do have eight colors, but like 50 grams of each color. It's a possibility. <laughs> Also, I love the Juniper Cowl by uh, Tony Lipsy. Oh my gosh, the Juniper Cowl, it's like a puff stitch, but you only need 10 minis. And I think I kind of figured out I'm gonna use Amplifier minis for that, but wouldn't that be really cool? Um, that would just be really pretty. So I always have that option. And then last year, what I almost did was the Ziggy Interrupted by Sandra Paul. It's crochet. Um, it's not meant to be an added pattern, but it does have like five colors, I believe. Um, I think, yeah, five colors. And I was gonna adapt it. So I know people have done it. They've adapted it for Advents or for mini skeins. But the thing is, you have to have so many colors in the beginning to kind of do the blocks that are at the bottom. Um, and I thought maybe I could just knit the other part and then add the blocks later. But then I was, I knew I probably, or not knit, crochet. And I know you could do it with crochet quite easily. However, <laughs> I, Cause the way that you piece them on there, it just, it, I wasn't, I wasn't, I did not have the brain power to think how I could swap that out last year during Advent time, which is why I want soothing patterns to figure out how I was going to work that, which is why I was actually thinking my Mandy's making is going to be great. However, you need 500 grams of yarn for that. And I only have 400 grams of yarn. I do have another share pair in my stash but it's like this orangey goldy color and like a whiter speckly color. And so I don't know if that's going to go with the other colors. I haven't seen them yet. So I think I'm going to open up at least the first two weeks before I kind of decide what I'm going to do with it. Um, and you can always add in whatever skeins you want. For Advent, I try to keep it to the same Advent or same dyer because I want it to be similar. Just, you know, that's how I want it to be. You can do whatever you want, though. You can always add in whatever you want. And then I like to have some honorable mentions that I won't be doing for reasons, but I really like them and I'm going to hold on to them for next year. I mean, I have my whole bundle in there. You guys can go see in Ravelry, but there's some that I really wanted to do, but they don't really work for the advents that I have. So the Scrappy Knit Shawl by Regina Weiss. I saw this on someone else's podcast recently. It uses any gauge yarn, any gauge, any weight yarn. And it's more, but this is more tailored for scraps because you're only doing one stripe per color and you leave like fringe hanging i love it so much i won't just like it but like you wouldn't use hardly any of your advent it'd be good for like leftovers of an advent or mainly just for scraps so i want to use that for like a scrap it's purely a scrappy project and i definitely want to make that then there's also the adventurous scarf by tony lipsy i wanted to make this so long or maybe she only released it last year <laughs> maybe she only released it last year but it's tunisian crochet and I really want to make it and it's made for Advent and I definitely will, but I don't know how to Tunisian crochet yet. And I don't even have Tunisian crochet hooks, but I am asking for Tunisian crochet hooks for Christmas. So hopefully I'll get those and then I'll be able to make it next year. Then there's also the Radvent cardigan by Amber O'Brien. I actually, in the beginning of the year when I was looking for Advents, I was thinking that that was going to be one of the Advents I was going to make for this year. But I was looking for an, uh, an Advent that was because I want it to be a fade. If I'm going to do the Radvent cardigan, I want it to be a fade. And I could not find a fade that faded the colors I wanted. So I'm going to be wearing it. So I wanted to make sure there wasn't like, or, and it's, I know you can't, it's hard to like guess what's going to be in your Advent. So I wanted to find something that I saw their mood board really had like no orange or no gold or which is hard. Or, you know, I want it to be colors that I, I would want to wear and a fade and I did find one lavender loon yarn company they had a great moon phase one but it was only like 20 minis and I definitely need 25 with a main color or 24 with the main color main skein so that wasn't really gonna work and I was like I could get more yarn but like oh like too much thought had to go into it and I was like I right, I'll just wait until I find another good fade um because yeah this moon fade was gonna be really cool it looked like blues and purples which was right up my alley but it just wasn't enough because I think it was like a winter solstice advent. So it wasn't like a full 25 days or 24 days. 
So that's it for patterns that I pulled out of my little Ravelry bundle, Advents and Scraps, um, that I, I'm really considering making for this round of Advents. I really, I think I'm actually worse off <laughs> than I was before I started, because I at least had it narrowed down, but then I realized I had it narrowed down because my Hedgehog Fibers only has 24 days and no main skein. And I just realized that I was talking to you I have a ton of hedgehog fibers main skeins I could just swap in. <laughs> but I do think, I do think that my Mrs. Fuzzy wig by Don Barker of Barker Wool, I think that's gonna be, because looking at the mood board for what Ruby and Rose has had and knowing her like palette, I think that would look really pretty in that um, crochet shawl. And I don't need a main skein and I have one in that. So I think that I'm, like 90% sure <laughs> that my Ruby and Rose is going to be for Mrs. Fezzy wig, right? Barker wool, Don Barker, Barker wool. That's crochet. Now, when it comes to hedgehog fibers, I have no clue. <laughs> um, I just don't know. And then Mandy's makings, I think I'm leaning more toward the Ziggy Interruptive because I've been wanting that for a while and I really want to make it and it's going to be perfect. But that one I'm going to decide later. I'm, I think I'll at least open up the second week to, to make a decision. I want to see the colors first. Because the first week is going to show me two colors because it's a share pair. So it's going to be 50 gram of one skein, 50 gram of another skein, two different colors. So I want to kind of see it. Um, so I'm leaning more towards that. And that's also crochet. So my hedgehog fibers will be knit. And all the ones I had considered for it are knitted, so that's okay. The Candy Mountain Cowl, I mean, I already I already got this for it. Shouldn't I just do it? But then, if I do that, I still have 10 grams left of that color. What am I going to do with it? I cannot do the adventuring wrap because I would need the full, the full minis. I could do the mini patch cowl with it. Or... I also want to do a pom-pom garland for my yarn room as decoration. I could just do the leftovers for a pom-pom garland. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. So you guys will see if you're on Instagram, you're going to be following me. That's where I'm going to do my vlog miss is on Instagram. I'm going to do it through stories. I'll save all the stories into a highlight so you guys can refer back to them or you can catch up, whatever. I'm going to try and post as I go throughout the day. Sometimes it'll just be later on depending on where we are. Um, and but be, those will be posted in stories. Short little clips of what we're doing, the admins I'm opening, maybe some knitting. Um, and so check us out over there. That does mean though that I will have a, at least one podcast in December. I'm gonna try to inform two, but I'm pretty sure one is all we're gonna get because I'll just be so busy. And then that way I'll catch, just catch you up on my advent knitting, advent yarn. I'll show you guys all of that. So don't worry if you don't have Instagram, but that's where I'm going to be doing vlogmas over on Instagram in the story section of this year. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll probably post, start posting the Instagram stories for vlogmas on Wednesday, like showing you guys prep and that sort of thing. I may post pictures randomly over here on YouTube um, for you guys to see, but mainly over on Instagram. I've also made a decision on the Sorry Nordland um, MCAL that I'm participating in. It started today. The pattern drop, it's on sale if you're going to do it. Throughout this whole MCAL, it's like 25% off. So it cost me like, what, three or four dollars, US dollars. Um, and it is a knit along, a mystery knit along, and it releases a new clue every Monday. So today was the first clue. It's toe up cable socks. And if you've known Sorry Norland's patterns, her cable socks are a dream. I've never made any. I made her Midnight Dancer socks, so like a ruffly top. I haven't made any of her cable ones because, you know, I always want to make cable ones, but they take a while. And I just, you know, like just knit vanilla or whatever, a simple pattern. So I thought, this, I thought this was perfect. It'd be like a knit along advent type of thing. And I get to use yarn from Stash. I have chosen, or it chose me, but this is from Stash. Show the front of that. Woolberry Fiber Co. And this was, um, I would say gifted to me, but I won this from Danelle of Novel Knits, her podcast. I won this, I think earlier this year, I want to say. And I'm really excited because she even included this cute little um, progress keeper. And I'm going to use that with this whole thing. And it seems, I mean, it's called, it's magical. 
it seems a little holiday-ish, right? This mini skein looks a little holiday-ish. And I'm going to use this. I'm going to wind this up now. I've already bought the pattern, downloaded it. I haven't started yet, but I'm going to wind this up today and get started on it. And I've already seen the first clue. So it's like the, the toe up part and like the first section of the foot. It's so pretty. So excited. So I'm going to get, and then, and it really kind of sealed the deal. Like I was already leaning towards this one. And when I saw the cable pattern, I was like, yes, this color, oops, I'm dropping. This color is like, it'll look great in this. So I'm really excited. So thank you, Danelle. And I'll get to think of Danelle whenever I'm knitting this. <laughs> so yeah, I'm so excited. So at least I've made one decision, <laughs> right? I'm more of a last minute decision person. Like I'm, a, I'm a procrastinator, but I do my best work when I'm forced to at the very last minute. It's also very stressful when I do that to myself, but that's just how I roll, I guess. So you guys will see what I decide. I'm gonna keep you guys keep you guys as updated as I can on Instagram. And the rest of it, I'll just show you guys in the next podcast. So until next time, happy December. Bye.